Well, hello and welcome to Trinity Church's online service. I'm so glad you chose to join us today. My name is Keith Niemeyer and I have the honor and privilege of serving as both the Student Ministries Director as well as the Worship Director here at Trinity Church. If you happen to have a Bible with you today, we will be looking at a few verses, but our main scripture can be found in Matthew 28. As we have wrapped up our Easter season and finished our previous series looking at the final 24 hours of Jesus' life here on earth, I wanted to take some time and just reflect on why it all matters. Last week in our youth group, our lesson was on why the resurrection matters, did it really change anything, are our lives any different, and now what do we do? We've been in the series where we're looking at some of the tough questions, wrestling with some of the doubts that, that comes with the Christian faith, and the resurrection is a big part of that. So for me, I often worry that during Easter, that in a way I just kind of shut my brain off and, and go through the motions. If you have been a follower of Christ for more than a few years, it seems like we talk about the same stories, we study some of the same gospel accounts, and then we move on to something different. I know for me, this was back in college, and it's exactly how I felt. My biggest fear for myself is that, that I take for granted what truly happened on that day and that I miss the importance of the power of the resurrection and what that means for me now. Pastor Brent has a saying that, that you may be familiar with. He says, believe the good news. We live in a world where a resurrection has happened. The tomb is empty. Jesus is alive. And that really does change everything. I love that. And it often makes me think about what the disciples were going through. They just spent years of their lives following Jesus, learning and growing and asking questions, wrestling with his teachings, and now their entire world is flipped upside down. I'm sure most of them thought that, that this journey with Jesus would be, would be a lifelong journey, that, that they never imagined life without him being there physically. So this would have been a lot to take in. And understandably, when this all happened, they were lost, confused, and afraid so this is where I want to spend a little bit of time today and, and to look at this question of, of now what? Now what do we do? Where do we go? What does this death and resurrection even mean? Not just for the disciples, but for us today. Is our life any different because of it? So after Jesus' resurrection, he appears to the disciples, and before he leaves them, we read this in Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. We often refer to this as the Great Commission, and, and you may have heard this verse many times. Jesus is challenging the disciples to take the good news of his resurrection and the power over sin and death and to spread that with others. So have you ever been excited to share good news with someone? Have you ever received something that, that made you excited? Maybe you received a gift that you had been waiting for for a while, or you were accepted into a program, a school, a team, or you received a good report from the doctor. Maybe there was a major accomplishment or, or a new addition to the family. Maybe it was simply that you booked a vacation. I can remember when Jess and I booked a vacation, we decided that we wanted to go to Disneyland. If you know Jess at all, you can only imagine her excitement. This is all that she could talk about. She even made this calendar of, of Mickey ears where it was a countdown until the, the day that we left. There's like 150, 160 of them. Uh, and each day she would, she would cross them all off and, and fill it in. So that way she knew exactly where we were at before we left on vacation. She would even make up some silly songs about the, the rides or, or what we were going to do. She had an entire itinerary of, of rides that we would go on, places that we would eat, desserts that she wanted to try. She told everyone about this. And it makes sense. When we have good news, we naturally want to tell others. Our excitement and gratitude extends an invitation to others to join us in our celebration. So God has given us this incredible gift, this gift of eternal life, and even sets us free from sin. And that's huge. That's what Easter is all about. We have to make sure that we never allow this good news to become so familiar that we lose gratitude or excitement. This undeserved gift that we could never earn ourselves should cause us to burst with praise and excitement. In Psalm 34, we read this. 
I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear me and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. The message version puts it this way. I bless God every chance I get. My lungs expand with his praise. I live and breathe God. If things aren't going well, hear this and be happy. Join me in spreading the good news. Together, let's get the word out. I love that, but it also comes with another big challenge. Join me in spreading the news. Together, let's get the word out. Some people are naturally gifted or amazing at sharing their faith, whether with family and friends or, or even complete strangers. I know for me, there are a handful of people that instantly come to mind. Sharing their faith in a, in a grocery store line or on a road trip, on a vacation, with their coworkers. It's something that, that I know for me, I, I've struggled with, but I wanted to share today a few things that have really helped. I came across an article that, that talked about the biggest reasons or more, most common reasons that Christians don't share their faith. Being mocked or upsetting others was pretty common, and I can definitely relate to that. But the most common reason was not knowing what to say. Sometimes we think that there's this magical printout of, of how we are to share our faith, and, and until we have that down, that, that we aren't equipped to share with others. I've been in that boat before, and, and I have often used that as an excuse to take the easy way out. In youth group, we have talked about our personal stories, or, or often referred to as, as our testimony, who God is in our life, and how we would respond if someone asked us about our faith. In 1 Peter 3.15, it says this, But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. So today I want to share just a simple tool that has been really helpful for me and was distributed by a discipleship and evangelism organization. If you've ever heard of Dare to Share, they put together this, this gospel presentation in a way that, that students could easily grasp onto and then go and share that with friends, family, people on their, their phone, uh, or when they got back home, uh, coworkers, teammates, classmates, whatever it may be. So it was a simple way of, of breaking down the gospel into smaller pieces that can help us as we share our faith. Again, this is not a magical printout on, on how to share our faith. And I think that there is a, a huge importance on, on your testimony and being able to share your personal story of who God is and what he is doing in and around you. I like this example of the gospel story because it helps me stay focused on some of the key aspects of the gospel. And it breaks it up into manageable pieces. And it goes like this, God, our sins, pain, everyone, life. And as we go through each of these, they have a, a simple reminder sentence or statement. Uh, and, it, and again, it goes like this. God created us to be with him. Our sins separate us from God. Sins cannot be removed by good deeds. Paying the price for sin, Jesus died and rose again. Everyone who trusts in him alone has eternal life. And life with him starts now and lasts forever. So we're just going to spend a little bit of time going through each aspect of, of the gospel presentation. And again, this is just to really help us understand some of the key aspects as we're putting our own personal story in this as well. So the first one, God. God created us to be with him. Way back in the very beginning, we read in Genesis that God created every living thing, including mankind. We were made with a purpose. We were wonderfully created by the creator of the universe. And we were created to be in a relationship with him and one another. So in the beginning, everything was perfect. Mankind was in perfect harmony and, and had a close relationship with God, but it wasn't perfect forever. Our sins separate us from God. Sin came into the world and changed everything. Instantly, this dynamic that we had previously had with God was changed. Mankind was distanced from God and, and removed from the garden. Sin is anything that separates us from God or creates division or distance in this relationship with him. We do have this list of, of Ten Commandments, but I believe that, that sin goes way beyond that. 
at times we seem to be naturally drawn towards sin. And we have to fight temptations on a daily basis. We have to choose every day and in every moment if we are going to choose to follow sin or follow God. Sins cannot be replaced by good deeds. Sometimes we start to think that, well, uh, I'm a decent person and, and I'm not nearly as bad as fill in the blank, whoever that may be. I'm not as bad as they are or I don't do as many bad things as they are, so I should be okay. Or I do so many good deeds and, and I help people, so I'm sure that God will understand and, and cut me some slack for the times that I mess up. Here's the problem with that kind of thinking. Sins cannot be removed by good deeds. But why? That would put all of the power on us. That gives us total control. If I do enough good things, maybe I could have a cheat day here and there and, and just kind of do whatever I want. Or we start to think that, that I know that I've messed up, but it's okay. It's not really that big of a deal. I'll just work really hard this week and, and maybe a little bit next week and, and kind of make up for it. That's not how it works. So this is where Jesus comes in. Paying the price for sin, Jesus died and rose again. So now what? God wants to be in a relationship with us, but it's all messed up. And there's nothing that, that you or I can do about it. We are separated from God and everything is a mess. God created a way for us to mend this broken relationship, but it wasn't anything to do with what we could do. It was everything to do with who Jesus is. Nothing to do with our abilities. It's all because of a sacrifice that was made on our behalf. So paying the price for sin, Jesus died and rose again. This is what the resurrection was for. This is what Jesus came to do for you, for me. And he did it because of his love for us. This is the gospel. This is the good news, the main event that we just walked through as a church. This is the exciting news that we should be sharing with other people and inviting them into the celebration with us. So what was broken has now been mended. We now have a way to be closer to God. It had nothing to do with what we did, but what Jesus did. And that's the good news of the gospel. So everyone, everyone who believes in him has eternal life. So now what? What does that matter? What did Jesus accomplish and how should we respond? Jesus gave his life so that we could be forgiven, so that we could be made new creations, so we could live in communion with God. His whole earthly ministry was pointing us back to this relationship with the Father. He came in order that we may have new life. And now it's up to us to accept the invitation into the family of God. Scripture tells us that, that anyone who believes in him will have eternal life. We have been extended this invitation into the family of God, not based on our own merits, not based on our pasts, thank goodness, and not based on our current circumstances. There is nothing that we could ever do to earn this salvation. We have been invited into this family, and this invitation is extended to everyone. We get to be a part of extending that invitation to others and to help usher them into a relationship with God. And here's the really cool part. Life with him begins now and lasts forever. This is so cool. This, this is what I think is, is the best about this gospel presentation that accepting Jesus into our life is instant, that there's no processing time. You don't have to submit an application with references and, and wait to hear back. You don't have to meet any certain type of requirements before this invitation is accepted. Life with God starts now and lasts forever. We can all be a part of the family of God. So this is the good news of the gospel. We have a father in heaven who loved us so much that he willingly sent his son Jesus to die in our place for our sins. We have Jesus who was willing to offer his own life to take on our sins, to die in our place so that we can have this relationship with God. As we begin to think about our own story, our own testimony, my prayer is that, that we will take this opportunity to really reflect on how God has shown up in our lives. As we begin to process through our own story, we can put some of these pieces together and feel more confident in sharing our story. Maybe even take some time as a family to practice sharing your story and, and sharing the gospel message. And maybe today you're watching this and you don't have a personal relationship with Christ. 
I pray that, that you will wrestle with this message and reach out to Pastor Brent or myself by calling the church office or sending us an email. And we would love to connect with you and to begin this process together. If you missed any part of the previous series as we walked through the events leading up to the death and resurrection of Jesus, I challenge you to go to our website, trcwapon.com, and find the messages under the message tab on our website. So I pray that this message was encouraging, but also challenging, and that as we continue to reflect on the message given to us by Jesus, that we will begin sharing the good news with all those that we encounter. I want to share a song that really wraps up this idea of sharing our faith and allowing God to use us to spread the gospel. But before I do that, I just want to repeat the blessing that Pastor Brent shares with us so often. Believe the good news. We live in a world where a resurrection has happened. The tomb is empty, Jesus is alive, and that really does change everything. So let me pray. Lord, we just thank you so much for the opportunity to to come together in this time of worship, time of hearing your, your word through scriptures, and then beginning to unpack what the gospel message is and, and the reason the resurrection happened and, and what that means for us now today. Lord, as we've talked about some of the the fears that comes with sharing our faith, I just pray that you help us to to overcome those those anxieties. I pray that that you give us wisdom and strength as as we leave and and go throughout our day-to-day life. I I pray that you help us and and just give us the the courage to begin practicing sharing our story, sharing our faith. I pray that the the tools given today will, will help us to begin that process. Again, not that it's a cookie cutter, this is the way that you should do it, and and this is the only way that works, but a way that that helps us to to begin to put all of those pieces together in a simple way that we can remember as we go throughout our day-to-day life. Lord, we recognize that there's so many times where we we have shied away from the opportunities you have presented us with, the the people that you have put in our lives, and we ask for forgiveness for those times and, and those situations. We pray that that you will continue to to give us new opportunities to to share our faith, to to share who you are, to be excited and and joyful of of all that you are doing in our lives. So I pray that that throughout the next few weeks, as we continue to wrestle with this, that, that you give us new opportunities to either practice sharing our faith or put people in our lives that that really need to hear the hope of the resurrection. So we thank you so much for this opportunity and just pray that you continue to watch over us in the weeks to come. It's in your name we pray. Amen.